and this is Olorge Sailia. Moby Kaigua is here to produce a documentary about this young American woman with an eye for fine jewelry. Only this time, the designer is not sitting in the comforts of America looking for inspiration. She has immersed herself in Maasai land. It's a bit hectic. Yeah? Yeah. Everybody's in today, yeah? To Moby, this is a story worth documenting. She takes her time directing what she wants to see in the film. Yeah, that's nice. I, I hope that uh, the proof will, of the pudding, as they say, will be in the eating and that people will enjoy the story that I'm telling. This is Moby at her best. She's disturbed by how much others tend to appreciate Kenya and all its beauty and rich history. If tourism or people are hearing about the word or the name Kenya because of the things that are being made by Ralph Lauren or Givenchy, then surely there should be a Kenyan designer or a Kenyan company that seeks to find a way of maximizing what, uh, what we already have. Capturing moments and the rich history that rumbles in the plains of the Kenyan landscape has become her passion. But Moby is more. She's an actress. 40 poems, two plants. <laughs> A writer, a director, she sits on boards that promote different spheres of art. Among her celebrated works is a play she aptly named, They Call Me Wajiko. It uh, concerned me that there wasn't a picture of Wajiko until Gado made a cartoon. And she was wearing a headscarf, she was barefoot, she was carrying um, wood on her back. She, d she didn't seem to be who I am. And yet I am a Wajiko, and so I, I decided to look for Wajiko. The Wajiko of her imagination can be this one too. My name is Priya, and I understand that they call me Wajiko. And that is Moby, the actress, the one who captures your imagination with her prowess at delivering her best to the audience. It's a journey she started at the young age of 10. She has never looked back, and even when she was employed by the United Nations, she had an eye for the arts. Her acting career has seen her feature in internationally acclaimed projects like the Oscar-nominated film The Constant Gardener. She acted in the award-winning Australian TV show Neighbours. When she joined the cast in the Morefire musical in 2009, Moby celebrated her role. It's not very often that I had an opportunity to play, play the bad guy. Um, my role as Anna Mali was to uh, seduce the main character. A mother of two, she's keen on delivering her message, whether on stage or film, in a compelling way. That she's passionate about social justice is not in doubt. Her art speaks to this fact through Arts Canvas, a company she founded. Moby and her team have toured the East African region, taking with them the Kigezindoto drama. In one of the tours, they visited the internally displaced people in the camps speaking to an issue that continues to prick the Kenyan conscience, tribe. If tribe were a sound, a feeling, a life, what would that be like? Over four decades in performing arts, Moby says the government has not given the industry the attention it deserves. Every single culture minister since time has not realized that they are the ministry that is fundamental to who it is we are. I see culture as the bedrock of everything that we stand on and it should be given a lot more weight as a governmental, as a government office. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Yeah. Why is Nigeria cited as one of the successful countries in theatre and film? They purchase from within and that's what's going to be able to make us be huge outside. We're not going to be huge outside if we're not huge here. And the only way we can be huge here is if our own people support us yeah. before we die. And if you belong to the class of Kenyans that just love to criticize, take this. You know, we don't talk with pride when we're in public fora about who we are. We say, ah, but you know how Kenya is. Ah, but you know the problem with Kenya is. Ah, Kenyans, 
you know, we're, we're very, we have a denigrating way of talking about ourselves, and, and it's deep. And what we need are these cultural policies and these, um, you know, you, we almost need to be forced to relook at who it is we are. In 1978, Mobi was named the national best actress at the Kenya Schools Drama Festival. She has never looked back and currently she is the most influential woman in arts and culture in Africa. For Citizen Weekend, I am Anne Mawathe.